Hello all and welcome back to High Ridge Farm with me, the Walrus. It's now the third of the fourth year in spring. And we are roaming through the glorious valleys of Stardew Valley. As it valleys. I mean, it's sort of. Now, of course, what with the 1.6 update, we have a few more things to try to discover. Now, like some of you, I'm going in completely blind. Now, yesterday I purchased a couple of mannequins, which I'm going to put I have put in the house. I was originally gonna put them in um in Haley's area, but I, I think that it makes sense to have them down down lower on the, down in the house. And what I now need to do is figure out an interesting and awesome outfit to put on them. Uh, what that'll be, I don't know. I, I'm sure I can figure out something at some point. Well, one would hope that I can figure out stuff. Okay. Now, of course, I haven't planted a large number of crops so far this uh, season. And part of it is really due to the fact that I don't really know what I want to grow. And uh, I know that might sound a very, well, counterproductive. It's really because it is. I don't know what I want to grow, so therefore I'm not actually growing anything, which is not going to help my profit margins. Now, money isn't as big of a concern for me right this moment, what with having achieved perfection at the end of year three by getting the 10 million. But I do still want to continue gathering money because I'm sure there's going to be some expensive things for me to purchase later on. I need to visit all of the shops and find out what they have that's new. I haven't visited the dwarf yet um, in either the, the volcano dwarf or the regular dwarf. So they're going to be things that I'm going to need to investigate. One of the other things that I haven't yet figured out is this mastery thing. Now I saw it pop up, but I'm not sure what it meant. So my curiosity is piqued. We will identify what the hell is going on with that. I'm sure it won't be uh, anything super con difficult to worry about, but I think just as I continue to gather resources, I'm sure it'll all make more sense and things and stuff and colouring in and all that malarkey. Now, of course, we're going to be grabbing all these lovely tree fruits. Now, a lot of these are just generally turned into preserves very quickly in my preserve shed. Although I am considering, do I want to use the dehydrator I need to figure out, I'm, I'm sure there's like an equation on like how much uh, a food de like um, the fruit dehydrator actually gives you comparatively. But let's just quickly pan for some gold here. Now one of the things I do want to check and see is does visiting Clint with the pan give me the option of, well, increasing the the material of the pan. Now, if I improve the material of the pan itself, what does that actually entail is my next question and quandary. Because, well, what does it do? Is a, an iron pan better than a copper pan? I mean, I assumed that now that it has a name that is copper, that kind of indicated that, yes, that was actually a thing. Um, they, they could be upgraded. I could be wrong. But it's a, a guess. We'll soon see, though, today. Because that's part of my plan is to go and visit Clint and get that stuff upgraded. Okay, so let's just quickly crack that in there. And... Okay, I also want to visit Clint because I want to have this mystery container box thing opened up. I don't know what it does or what's going to be potentially inside of it, so... Hey, it could be interesting. It might have an interesting loot table. I'm not sure. Again, we will see. Hopefully it is something exciting because that's, you know, that's what I'm after. Exciting stuff. Okay, so we've got some more beers ready. I do need to maybe reorganize a little bit of um, what's actually in these storage bins. And perhaps another visit to Ginger Island is in order for that. I think what I should probably do is when I get to a certain money threshold, I should probably stop trying to grow stuff that, like, actually, like, maybe stop being so concerned about making sure that everything is harvested every day and 
try and work through more of what's actually going on in the village and in the the game itself, as in the, the, the new stuff. Because I'm sure there have got to be different ways that I can honestly look at what I'm trying to do and can I achieve something useful for myself moving forward? I mean, I hope so. Okay, so we've got all those ancient fruits, so they're going to have to quickly get stuck in to be preserved. I mean, yes, it's not as good. I should probably not be doing ancient fruit into them, but uh, I have them on hand, so I'm going to do it anyway. Okay, so let's make some preserves, because preserves are nice. I do like a good jam. Okay. Well... One of the other things that I do want to test and see is I wonder if there are any special food stuffs that give a different result when put in a food dehydrator. Now, I'm, I'm considering that based on the fact that you get caviar from sturgeon eggs because that's certainly a possibility and my curiosity is definitely peaked on that front. So could be intriguing okay so let's go down here and have a look so nothing's here so we'll just grab a few bits of food and stuff out of here I think that's going to be the best plan of action isn't it today because of course we want to make sure that we have a good quantity of food and stuff that is ready to be preserved and pickled and so on and so forth so let's let's give that a try. Okay, so that's most of those sorted and out of the way. That's fine. Now, I've got a bunch of eggs. Now, the thing is, the golden eggs, I didn't realise this, but after having looked on reflection, it does appear that they give you three mayonnaise instead of the one. Now, of course, that's quite beneficial compared to to like the ostrich egg which gives 10 but I believe that the golden egg is laid every day so in theory what I really want to do is replace my chickens with golden chickens that is going to take a little bit of time however because of course I've got a few other chickens and I don't want to not have them if that makes sense I want to have a full stock of stuff okay well, that's all the mayonnaise on the go. That's good. I mean, we're always going to have lots of mayonnaise going in here, at least. One of the things I did see, because I do follow uh, Kenzendip on Twitter, is the fact that you can now drink mayonnaise. Now, I will have to try that at some point, because that is horrific. Um, the idea of drinking mayonnaise is just, oh, so revolting. Oh, well. You know, people choose to do weird things. Uh, I mean, I play video games. Uh, but I don't drink mayonnaise. I eat a lot of pickles, but I don't drink mayonnaise. Anyway, before I start rambling too hard about mayonnaise, and those might just go over and go, hang on a minute. Methinks the lady doth protest a little too much sort of uh, stance there. But yes, we've got a few other things to try and sort out here. Now, Pam's back from her couple of days of holiday, so that's nice. I don't think she went anywhere excited. Well, no, she went to Ginger Island. We did see her there, so she's obviously had a, a nice beach vacation. Unfortunately, my house there is not an Airbnb, so uh, hopefully she didn't decide that she was going to go and stay in my house. Because that would be a bit weird. Just like Pam staying in my house. That being said, in one of my other playthroughs, I've had her daughter stay there. Badum tis. But, hey, okay. it's the, the weird and wonderful that is. Okay, so we're just going to have a quick look at the desert. Uh, I want to just grab... I don't, sorry, I don't know why I hit that co uh, coconut with a hammer. You know when you have those moments to go, hang on a minute. I'm just going to check, as I mentioned earlier, all of the different stores' inventories for things that I may or may not have purchased. So it looks like she also sells the mannequins, which is interesting. Um... Okay, so the solar panels haven't generated us any batteries yet. I do believe it takes a couple of days of solar energy for them to generate. I wonder if it's been extended or anything. 
let's see if the desert trader's got anything. Now, I know their inventory changes on a daily basis. I mean, they've got some items that they always hold, but I know they only have certain items on certain days, so curiosity was peaked there. Okay, so nothing exciting there so far, then. That's fine. Right, so it's 2.20. Let's head on over to the town itself. So, Clint, can you upgrade my tool? Yes, you can upgrade my steel pan. I am most intrigued. Okay, so that's a good sign. And a good start, I think. Because if you can upgrade my pan, wonderful. Okay, so I'm going to grab the jade. Again, this is being used for ladder generation for later on delving into skull caverns. Now, I don't believe I'm going to be able to manage to get to floor 100 in skull caverns um, today. I just don't think that's going to happen. Which, you know, it, it's fair. It's It's been a, a long... I, I don't think that's going to happen today. It might not happen at all this week. It's something I wouldn't mind trying to do, but I'm kind of preoccupied at this moment in time with doing absolutely everything else. So I'm not sure. We will see, but I'm not sure. Okay, Clint, so I would like you to take my artifact troves and break them open. So we've got a dried starfish and a sword. Yay, things. I mean, neither of them particularly exciting, to be fair. Okay, some seeds, some flower seeds. Interesting. Well, I'm going to go plant those and I'll get Clint to upgrade the pan now that I've done that because I wanted to make sure that Clint actually um, was able to... Uh, complete the request um, and smack open the geodes and such because of course you can't do that if you're getting him to upgrade something so that's a, a common mistake I know I've made so don't really want to repeat it over and over and over again but for now we're gonna plant some seeds and I think we're gonna slap down some good fertilizer so the mixed flower seeds I'm assuming it'll give me a mixture it's like the mixed seeds generally but it's gonna give me well either of the two flowers? I think there's only two per season. I think. Uh, I could be wrong. There might be more. But I don't think there's only two. We can find out and see though, can't we? Shouldn't be too difficult. Right. Anyway, uh, so we're going to slap them down there. And of course we're going to water them because, of course, it'd be a bit absurd for me to not and we'll plant some other flowers because I think it might be nice, just generally speaking, to have a lot of flowers growing because flowers are lovely. And it's not a crop that I've grown much of, so we're taking a slight break from the mass wine and juice production, although that is something I do want, is more cauliflower so I can turn that into cauliflower juice. I'm actually going to have to start planting that, aren't I? Ugh. That's going to be a thing. Fine. But yes, we've got... Um, Lots of other crops that are available. And I say lots. I don't really have much of the spring crop available. I should probably purchase a bunch of the crops from each season just so I've got something ready. And I don't have to worry about visiting Pierre um, as much as I, I need to. Because at the end of the day, he is an annoying asshole. And I know it sounds awful to suggest it, but he is... You know, he's just a nasty person, really. He takes claim for the benefits of, you know, you've done stuff, and he wants to pretend that he it was him who obtained and gathered the things that you've sold to him and all sorts of grumble, grumble, grumble. Which is a bit cheeky. And uh, I, I don't like the way he treats his daughter sometimes. I think Abigail is probably one of the youngest coded characters. I think her, Alex, and Bastion are probably the youngest three when it comes to like age coding and uh, yeah it's the my brain goes uh, like I know I've, I've heard American parents calling college school before and that seems very unusual to me because it feels infantilizing and 
it might sound a bit, uh, a little bit silly, but it is a thing, I think, that um, a lot of the time that some of the older generations do tend to try to infantilize younger generations to make them seem less capable. I, a good example is the way that millennial is uh, a thing. When I first heard it, it made it sound, it made me feel actually kind of infantilized with regards to the way that it's described. Because when I look at it, I go, okay, well, what you're telling me is that you think that I was what born in the millennium, and I, I'm that young. What what are you telling me here? Because that's not not on. So yeah, that's uh, that's a thing. And I'm not sure whether that's actually the case for it, but it felt like it, for me at least. And I think that's the same with calling university or college school. Because it just doesn't feel right. But my tangent point is that I think that Abigail's probably 20? That's where I'd sort of like place her at the oldest. Like, she's still studying, and I know, at least within the UK, um, university courses tend to only be three years. They can be four. And that's for a basic undergrad. And I know that American colleges, it can be four years, usually. So, okay. So maybe we've got... She's 20-ish. But maybe... At the very youngest, she could be 18, which, uh, that gives me a bit of an, a concern, because, of course, the, the farmer is of an indeterminate age, but has been working, so, again, could be just 18, but could be mid-20s. That's kind of where I put the farmer, is, like, mid-20s or so. Now, of course, being somebody who's playing this game in my 30s, it does make me feel a little concerned about the idea of the my physical representation is essentially dating an eighteen year old. That 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 doesn't that doesn't fill me with joy. So um, yeah, but I do think that Pierre infantilizes her and her capabilities, and he was also quite dismissive of her ability because yeah, she wants to try and sword fight and she wants to fight monsters. She wants to skill herself up. Essentially, that's what she's after and. I think that's a, a good thing, that she wants to try to be capable. And again, that's perfectly reasonable for wanting to improve one's skills in combat. But hey, that's that, that's just the way he seems to come across. He, uh, but then again, village life, you know, you kind of get asked to do stuff. At the same time though, you don't really see Abigail actually doing any studying whilst she's at school. so. Who knows? She might be uh, studying remotely. I mean, that was that did become a massive thing during COVID, so <laughs> it's certainly a possibility. Who knows? Though? So yeah, that, that's the thing. It's not a terrible thing, but that's my my thoughts on that one. And uh, it was one of those discussions I saw recently as well, talking about the characters you dislike in Stardew Valley the most. And uh, Pierre was up there, uh, along with Morris. Uh, a lot of dislike for Lewis because of his treatment of Marnie. And I'm, I'm inclined to agree. I think Marnie does deserve better. Okay, so let's see what new stuff is available here. So we've got 65 gems. Uh, ooh, blue grass starter. What the hell's blue grass? I need moss. Okay, so I'm going to need moss. Wherever the hell I get that from is a next question. Um, yeah. Hopefully I can find some at some point, because, you know, I quite like some of that. I need it in quite a few recipes, to be fair. And uh, it, mm, I need it. I need it in and around my life. Okay, so what other things have we got that we can do here? Well... Not a huge amount other than that today, methinks. I think heading back to the farm is probably a good idea for now. We've got all this lovely uh, star fruit growing. We could plant more pineapples if I wanted. I mean, I've got, I do have that horde of 100 pineapple plants there almost. So if I tried to do that plant 100 pineapples uh, request, that wouldn't have actually been too difficult. Um, but yeah, I, I decided against that one. Um, 
I wanted to go in a different direction. Maybe a bit like a fool, but that that is what I wanted to do. Okay. Anything else that we've got here? Okay, so I yeah, I should have put a banana on here ages ago. Okay, and a gorilla. Cool. So it, it's a gorilla. And it's giving me some golden cut walnuts. Cool. Uh, I'm just going to double check. I can't believe that it took me that long to figure that out. I mean, that's a lie. I can believe, because I am an idiot, but it doesn't make me feel any better about it. So yeah, I'm feeling my stupidity ever so slightly there. So apologies on that front for realizing I'm an idiot. And especially if you've been sitting there going, yeah, it, it's it's really simple, Walrus. You just need to put a friggin' banana there. It's not like there's a banana on the display. No, no. <laughs> Ugh, I do wonder how I don't fall down more. Now, I've gathered all this tarot root, and I'm going to buy a couple of things now. So I've got the bird mask, and I've got the the, uh, the luau skirt. I might not wear them myself, but I'm going to put them into the the wardrobe so that they can be worn later on. And that would be good. Actually, you know what? I could put them on the mannequin. Since I've got it. Oh, okay. So that's annoying that that's happened. I wonder why that's occurred. Very frustrating. Well, I'll live. It's annoying, but I'll live. I, I didn't expect the, the warp totem point essentially to uh, end up shifting like that. Um, I could have sworn it was set so they would always teleport me above, but I guess to the side is... I mean, it's not impossible to deal with, because of course I was able to teleport out of it, or um, if all else failed, I could have just allowed myself to pass out. But thankfully, of course, I had my mining pickaxe and my axe on me at all times. So that's kind of a trade-off thing that I know I do. I always carry at least one of the tools, because I'm painfully aware I'm going to do something stupid. And uh, there, I feel vindicated in my stupidity so yeah oh my goodness look at all of these jars i really need to sort them out don't i and unfortunately what i've realized is i've noticed what the time is oops thankfully i'm on the farm so harvey's probably going to charge me a silly amount of money for recovery from me sleeping in the blooming barn that's annoying I feel a bit stupid, but that's uh, part of the course, really, for me, isn't it? Not the end of the world, but we'll deal. Okay, children, let's just be. Okay, so the cat's asleep. Lovely stuff. And time for some coffee. I think that's what I need to do is actually make a, an intense brewing procedure. So I've got to use one of the, the, the hybrid shed that has the pickling jars and the kegs. I'm going to make some more coffees in there I think, uh, when the next sort of um, stuff is ready. I can't remember when that'll be, but eh, it'll do. But once that's done then I'll be a nice coffee production, which will be great, because my goodness am I all about some of the caffeination. I need it to live, man. It's, it's a common constant state of being. I'm thankful that I shook my energy drink dependence, but the trouble is... Um, I, I've discovered uh, a new one that I quite like the taste of, and uh, yeah, it's it's not doing me any favours in that regard. It, Aldi, I don't know if it's the same in the rest of the, the, the world, but at least in the UK, have come out with their own versions of these sugar-free monster cans. You have a white one, a red one, and a purple one. The red one, a berries flavour one, really nice. And I'm being very, very careful, because there is an Aldi a five-minute walk from my front door. And I don't really want to be going to Aldi on a regular basis for energy drinks. What makes them even more devastatingly tasty is that they are 69p. <laughs> Especially considering monster cans are now, goodness, 170. It's, it's kind of alarming. I know it's the, the economics of that sort of thing. But when, when I look at it on a purely financial level, I go, that's expensive. But also, it's the... The potential, I know it's not great for me. So, I'm just thankful that they are sugar-free. And I don't have to worry quite as much with my diabetes. But, that's just how that goes. 
now so we're going to just quickly organize the gubbins that we've got going on here because that's going to be the main key plan for the day okay i've got lots of wood and lots of stone i'm wondering if there's going to be any more options for stuff to be made like new i mean obviously I, i'm assuming we're going to see more things that i i need to actually build um like the large chests and all um so my curiosity is going to be in peaked with that okay common mushrooms don't really care i mean i know that i've got my mushroom tree but i don't really i mean okay yeah it does have the chance to give you purple mushrooms and that's the only one i actually care about to be fair because the other ones i mean i don't think i can give you morels can they i think they are only red well, maybe not. I might not even be able to give you... Well, I would assume they'd give you red mushrooms, considering their shape and what they look like. Um, I, I could be wrong, though. But yes, the... Um, yeah, the, the common mushrooms... Are just, meh, don't care. I want, I'm assuming there's also a bunch more cooking recipes that are available now, so I should probably have a look and see. Because one would indeed assume that to be the case. I might be wrong, but again, that, that, that is what one would assume. Okay, so I've got my little dinosaur shed. I think that's what I'd like to have is a dinosaur coop, a golden chicken and duck and rabbit coop. I mean, I'm debating, do I want to have that many golden chickens? I mean, it wouldn't hurt, but... Maybe I'll have two rabbits, two ducks, and the rest can go old and chicken. Because that, that's a, a reasonable amount, I think. I think I should get another ostrich, though. I mean, to be fair, for pure financial terms, I should really just get another um, pig. Because the truffles are really way more financially viable for um, the, compared to other animals, I think. I think that's really the way I need to look at it. So, oh well. Okay. So, what other things can we organize here? So, we've got all of this stuff that I left lying around um, in the way from yesterday where I passed out. So, let's replenish all of these. I'm going to make some blueberry preserves. Oh my goodness, I have so many things in here. All the mango jelly. Now, mangoes are one of those things that I've actually been indulging in a little bit more recently. Now, I don't know about everyone else, but I occasionally go through phases of it. You know what I want? This particular fruit. Now, mango wasn't something that I'd ever actually prepared myself. I'd only ever bought it cubed in a, in a supermarket. Now, I've been quite fortunate that my uh, in my day job, I work with an, a really interesting multicultural um, collection of people. And it's allowed me an appreciation for different foods. One of the things I've really got into recently is called chow. And uh, I believe it's from um, Trinidad and Tobago. And my goodness, is it some tasty stuff. Like, hands down, probably one of the nicest things. It's slices of mango with lime juice, chili, and coriander, and a couple of other things. And it's just... oh. Absolutely delicious. And my colleagues who are from Trinidad have told me about how that you can, they'll, they'll chow almost anything. So I've done some with pineapple in it, which I found that I needed to add more salt to it because it was a bit too sweet. But it's the sort of thing that you can just eat like and just devour. It's frightening how tasty it is. Um, but the recipe I followed used a mango in its entirety. Um, so I learned how to peel and cook, prepare a mango, which I didn't actually know how to do, which is a bit embarrassing. But hey, that's how that goes. Um, I think it was a, and a full lime, salt and pepper, and ground in rather than um, like so, uh, shaken on like basic shakers. I wonder if that's just being them being a bit pretentious. But actually, cracked black pepper is very important to it. Coriander, and I used a um, a minced Scotch bonnet. And, uh, yeah, you can obviously use less spicy um, chilies. But the, the flavor combination of the sweet and salty, and well, there's not really that salty, but it's the sweet and spicy flavor combination. 
just phenomenal. Hands down, probably the nicest thing I have had as a, as a snack. Yes, okay, it does take a bit of preparation time, so it's not really snacky snack. Um, it's not something that you can just go, oh, I'll have a bowl of chow. But it's something I've made, and I've indulged in her, her breakfast a couple of times, much to the amusement of my uh, boss. Because he's like, you ate it for breakfast? I'm like, yeah, of course, it's delicious. Why would I not? Um, and yeah, that didn't do my diabetes any favours, because mango's quite sugary. It tasted good, though. And I felt a little bit more healthy eating a mango and um, a third of a pineapple for breakfast. <laughs> Okay, so we're just going to ambush Abigail here while I talk about mangoes. And I'll see what she's doing. Obviously, doctor's appointment. Very important stuff. I guess that's the thing, though. If you live near your doctor like that, you can be like, come on. You need to go see the doc. You need to get that physical done. Come on. You can do it. I believe in you. <laughs> Which, to be fair, is kind of a justifiable thing. Because, yeah, it needs to be done. You need to go and see. Okay, so we're going to harvest what we can whilst we're roaming it out and about so we've got some more wood here that's not too much of a worry again i'm just trying to gather wood because i want to complete that task and also a, an extra stockpile of wood doesn't hurt it is kind of handy to have extra wood um it, it's just one of those resources you know you're gonna need it so it doesn't hurt to have it and actually uh, you know use it properly Okay, so we're going to quickly go over here. So I've seen that large tree there. I wonder what that is. Because it's not there before. Okay, animal catalogue. So when Marnie decides to not actually be at work, I can summon Marnie through the... Okay, so you can buy golden eggs from her as well. I didn't know that. They're quite cute. The little animal-related thingies. I like those. They're quite pleasant, aren't they? And I could buy... Some more pet licenses. That's what I want. I'm really curious to see what I can get with pet licenses. I, I do like the idea of that. I can have a giant purple turtle. Yeah, I'm having a giant purple turtle. Yes, please. I say turtle. Tortoise. Because it's clearly not a, an aquatic creature. Before somebody comes at me for that. I know. Now, I've decided to name it after my, my first um, Patreon subscriber. As uh, I feel that's... Uh, I know that there is a, an ostrich named after them as well, but I, I feel a pet, now that pet licenses are a thing, I think pets are going to be where the, the first stage of um, my Patreon subscribers will be named after. I feel that's a, a good place to go with. So let's have a look and see what other things can we sort out. Robin, what do I need to make a food bowl? Because, uh, well, a water bowl, because I want to know. I'm going to need to know. Uh, oh, there it is. And it requires hardwood. Okay, that's not too much of a worry. I'm sure I've got some... I say I'm sure. I know I've got some hardwood lying around, so it's not really the end of the world. Because um, that's going to be easy. And once I grab that and sort that out, wonderful, we're on our way. Okay, 25 hardwood. Easy peasy. So... Animal catalogue. Now, obviously, I don't want to use the animal catalogue right off the bat because I don't want to go and speak to Marnie right away. We've already seen her today. But it could be handy later on, I guess. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's going to be a way that I'm going to need need that at some point. So, hey, that, that'll be good. We'll, we'll give it a go. We'll see. See what we can do. Right, what next? So... Let's us quickly ride on over to Robin because, again, I want to go and see her because she can help me with my... It's not really a problem per se, but she can help me with my requirement for a, another food, a water bowl for the animals. And let's just move a few things. Hold up. You can move the house. What? Oh, my goodness, that's a thing. I didn't... You can move the house. That's phenomenal. That's amazing. Oh my goodness. That is so, so cool. My goodness. Sorry, you can tell the level of excitement here because that means that farm layout can be easily managed and improved to suit your personal choices and your decisions on that. And oh man, 
that's really helpful. I mean, yes, it's it's uh, the place that it sits on is essentially dead land because yeah, you can't really do much with the the land that is um, there. What with it being uh, grass, but that's really handy. Oh my goodness gracious me, I'm I'm chuffed. Chuffed to bits. That's really handy. Okay, so I did indeed visit the Calico Desert. That's really cool that he has a, a bit of dialogue based on the fact that I've been to Calico. I mean, it's a little creepy, he knows, but eh, I can live. It's, it's not like the end of the world, is it? Because, well, of course, it's... That's how this goes. Of course I'm going to go visit Calico Desert. This is my jam. Okay. So that's an interesting sort of turn of events that we've had there. So we've got some interesting stuff that we can now do, I guess. Curiosity has now peaked. Um, I wonder what that would actually entail. Being able to move the farmhouse around. And like I say, it's on dead land because it's it's just grass. You can't grow anything there, but... If I wanted to, I mean, I don't think I could move the trees. Okay, big chest, wooden copper bar. It's a shame there's not a big stone chest. Because I don't like the look of the wooden chests. I, I know it's just a purely aesthetic thing, but I just don't like it as much. I know it's a me thing, but... Eh. I don't... I, I don't favour it as much. I think it's probably the... The best way of describing it, I, I do favour the the look of um, well the other. I I, I do prefer it. I, I much prefer the stone chests. So hey, I'm I'm sure that's going to be a mod coming soon. And that might be one of those mods that I actually do download because it doesn't actually add anything to the game. That's absurd and that's generally my sort of my stance on adding mods is does it add anything that makes the game dramatically easier if so no thanks um but i think it's just an aesthetic change from wood to stone yeah that, that i can deal with and uh yeah that, that that i can deal with and i'd be happy with that so maybe maybe but anyway, whilst we're here on the island, just going to go and slice my way through stuff, cut down a couple more trees. That's exactly how this rolls. Uh, what next? I think is the next question, isn't it? Um, hmm. Right. Well, it's only four, six o'clock. What can I do? I haven't been fishing yet, and I have heard that there is something in the waterfalls. So, perhaps... A little trip to the waterfall is in order. Um, whether that's uh, that beneficial, I don't know. But that is where I'm probably going to head. So I know there's a couple of waterfalls in the game. I think it's just going to be which waterfall um, can I actually easily access and what's going to be viable. Also, what's up here? Never seen this pathway before. What, what is this up here? I'm going to clear this debris out of the way. My curiosity is definitely peaked here. What's what's over here? I mean, it could be something interesting. I, I hope it's something interesting. Okay, so there's a some form of like almost like a shop stand there. I'm going to cut this tree down. What's it? Oh, there's a present. I wonder what's in that. A ticket. A prize ticket. What do I use, do the, what do I use prize tickets for? Use it in the prize machine in Lewis's house. Well, it looks like we're going to Lewis's house then, aren't we? Because, yeah, I need to I need to know. What, what is this? And, and what can it do for me? Because this could be interesting. Again, like I said, I've got no idea. It just could be really, um, curiously interesting. Okay, Oh. Oh. 
I didn't know that went to there. Uh, that must have been one of the extra shortcuts that I had put in. I did, did not even know that that was a thing. Well, that's kind of cool and quite useful. Okay, so I can't reach the waterfall there from here. Um, I'm assuming that the waterfall fish is probably a reasonably rare spawn in the grand scheme of things. Um, so I am going to try a couple of times. Um, now I know I can, like, slightly adjust the, where the, the bobber goes. Is there, a, is there another waterfall up here? Or is it just a, a cave system bit? I can't remember. Ah, no, it's just a cave. Damn, I thought that was a waterfall. Oh well. So it's not there then. Well, let's just grab that because we can. And, uh, kind of hope for the best on this one. Um, what next? Okay, so... Well... Hmm. My curiosity on the waterfall front will be sated at some point, I'm sure. But I just wanted to double check in case new passageways have been opened up. But I wonder what... I wonder what's there. In that little area that I've sort of opened up and discovered. Good evening, yes. So, Lewis, do you have anything to say? I'm assuming that's the prize machine there. Okay, so I've got, I've got the second ticket from the uh, dispenser outside. I'm assuming that when you complete one of the community tasks, now that you also get prize tickets. I guess that if you've already completed their quest, you get these. Interesting. Now, I got some uh, carrot seeds, which is really good, because, of course, I had been wondering how and where one obtains those. So that's a nice start that I've now figured out. Well, I say figured out. I've got some. I'll probably grow those 12, and I guess I'll throw a couple of them into the seed maker and try to get some more, because that might be nice, I guess. Well, okay, so let's pop some of this down, because of course I'm going to need to plant some carrots. That's not going to be super difficult, I don't think. And we'll just do some this and this. There we go. Nothing super complex, really, I don't think. Not too bad. Okay. And we'll slap those down. Wunderbar. And here we go. And what I've done is, of course, I've managed to slap them down in, in not an inconceivable pattern, but not in a particularly good one. That's annoying. Oh, well. That's how this goes. Uh, well, I need to plant some more because, well, I, I messed up. So what am I going to plant and where am I going to put it? Well, let's put some potatoes in. I mean, it's been a while since I've grown potato. And uh, I do enjoy a good old bit of potato. Because <clears throat> who doesn't like chips? And by chips, I mean fries. But also, crisps, chips. Yes. That being said, I've currently got a big pack of um, walkers or lays um, sat on my desk. The Thai sweet chili inspirations, which those things are like gold dust, I swear. I mean, they're, they're just fantastic. All the flavor is great. And, uh, ooh, well, let's have a quick check and see. So let's grab the horse out again for a second. Now it's 11.30, so I'm not going to risk it too much because, you know, we've already done that once in the last couple of days. Don't really want to pass out in the shed again. But I do need to check and see if I've got anything else that I'm missing in this sort of area. Like, I don't think there's anything else that I'm sort of missing from, like, general stupidity. And, okay, so you can't cast directly into the path of the waterfall. Now, I'd kind of assume that that might be the thing that you have to do, but maybe not. Maybe there's a, a different approach for this? Again, my curiosity is very much piqued, I wonder. And... Come on, let's see. Maybe something will sort of like show up and give me an option. Well, I'm catching stuff, I guess. It's not like anything super excitingly valuable, but I'm, I'm catching things, which 
And yeah, I'll, I'll live with. That's all well and good. Um, well, I think that's everything really I can do there right now. For now, I guess. I mean, we're coming up to midnight. Well, past midnight now. We're almost at 1am, so I'm going to have to be very, very careful. Because again, don't really want to end up screwing myself over again with uh, lack of sleep. That's my real life ability, not my farming ability. Although the idea of going to bed at 2am and then getting up at 6am as a farmer. Oof. I mean, I don't know any farmers who do go to sleep that late. I mean, I only know the one, but goodness gracious. Right, so that's quite sweet that she says goodnight, honey. That's adorable. So, thus endeth the day. So thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you have enjoyed. Please do like, share, and subscribe, and share with those around you, because it's always nice to see. A very big thank you goes out to my Patreon supporters, and, well, to all of you for tuning in. Um, all those likes, shares, and subscribes do help. So hopefully I'll catch you again the next time the Walrus plays Stardew Valley.